Poland allowed the armed forces of Ukraine to use weapons supplied by the Republic to strike targets on the territory of the Russian Federation. This statement was made by the Deputy Ministry of Defense of the State, Cesary Tomczyk, on the radio station Radio Z. There are no such restrictions on the Polish weapons that we supply to Ukraine, he said, speaking about the possibility of Ukrainian armed forces striking Russia with Polish weapons. Tomczyk added that Warsaw was preparing the 45th military aid package for Ukraine. According to his assessment, its total value over the past years amounted to $3.75 to $5 billion. Earlier, French President Emmanuel Macron announced the need to allow attacks on military targets on Russian territory. In turn, John Kirby, coordinator for strategic communications at the White House National Security Council, said that the United States of America does not support the desire of the Ukrainian authorities to use weapons supplied by the West to attack Russia. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg also supported Ukraine's position, emphasizing that the country has a full right to defend itself and can attack targets outside its borders. EU diplomacy chief Josep Borrell echoed this opinion, calling on EU member states not to put the fear of escalation above Ukraine's right to defense. At the same time, Belgian Prime Minister Alexander de Croo emphasized a different position at a joint conference with Volodymyr Zelensky. He said that military equipment supplied to Ukraine should be used only on its territory. Russia produces artillery shells about three times faster than Ukraine's allies. Russia produces artillery shells about three times faster than Ukraine's Western allies and they cost four times less. This is evidenced by an analysis shared by Sky News. The calculations by consultancy Bain and Company highlight the serious challenge facing Ukraine's armed forces as they rely on ammunition supplies from the US and Europe to fight the Russian Federation. It is noted that the full-scale war between Ukraine and the occupiers was described from the very beginning as a battle by fire due to the number of artillery shells used. This has prompted the Allies to seek to increase production at their factories, but their capacity still lags behind Russia's despite a combined economic power that vastly outstrips Moscow. According to Ukrainian soldiers on the front line, for every shot they fire, the invading forces can fire about five shells in response. To combat this problem, the defense forces have learned to ensure that every attack is successful. Often with one or two or three shells, we can completely destroy a target, said Senior Lieutenant Konstantin, commander of an artillery battery in the 57th Brigade, which is fighting a new Russian incursion into the Kharkov region. According to him, the Ukrainian armed forces still need additional support. This is necessary to effectively deter the Russian Federation so that every meter of land they try to seize costs them hundreds of lives. The study found that Russian factories are likely to produce or refurbish about 4.5 million artillery shells this year, compared with a total production of about 1.3 million shells in European countries and the United States. At the same time, the cost of producing a 155mm projectile from NATO countries is about $4,000 per unit, while Russia produces a 152mm projectile for $1,000. Another problem is that during exercises, our military is forced to simply pretend to fire weapons. In fact, they are using ammunition for the first time on the battlefield. We don't have enough N law and we need more. We would like to thank our Western partners for their help. But if possible, we would be very grateful if they could provide more ammunition to NATO, said a soldier with the call sign Bolt, which trained new soldiers of the reconnaissance battalion of the 5th Brigade.